Hey everybody. So today we are going to play with more tatting because we are. <laughs> um, what did we do Wednesday? Wednesday we did some lace and um, oh we've done some cabling and I've shown you the basics on tatting like how to make a ring, how to make a chain, how to join, uh, how to make the pico. That's a very important thing. So um, today we're going to use this book. It's called Advanced Fancy Pants. And of course you must say it like Fancy Pants because, you know, it says Fancy Pants on it. Uh, and if you're wondering why my text is always backwards, it's because I'm using the front facing camera um, on my phone when I do these videos so that um, I can actually see myself and I can make sure that I'm showing you things correctly. So. Um, we carry Advanced Fancy Pants at Black Sheep Fiber Emporium and you can click over and check. I don't think I have any in stock at the moment, but if someone really wants one, just pop a comment or send me a message, an email, and I will make sure that we get some ordered and in stock. They're really good books. There's the Fancy Pants, which is the beginners, and then Advanced Fancy Pants, because again, you have to say it like that, right? Um, that is the intermediate and advanced version and so um, I think they're 10 or 12 dollars each they're not super expensive um, you know they're they're kind of like a little homemade book um, but there's photos in it and there's just some really good stuff so if you're interested in um, learning to tat and you need something to kind of you know keep in your uh, tatting library then this is a really good option the fancy pants and the advanced fancy pants because I just can't not say it that way. It's just something in my head. Um, let's see some reminders. Today is the first day of slow crawl. Uh, slow yarn crawl is actually happening and you can do that by supporting your shops. Some of them are making up little um, like slow yarn crawl kits. And so, um, who was it? I saw Seattle Yarn this morning had that. Um, I think we're gonna do something similar. Just don't have it done quite yet. Um, for black sheep. We did get the passports up. There is a link on the front of the website, so I did get that done. Uh, Tina put up a tutorial on how to do her uh, Ben Golden uh, shrug. It's this big tweed shrug. It's very cool. Um, on YouTube, on our Black Sheep Fiber Emporium YouTube channel. So I am trying to remember I didn't do all of them, I need to go back and add some, but I'm trying to remember to put up all of these Facebook Live discussions that we have on YouTube so that um, if you like YouTube better, you can go there instead and you can check out the techniques that we're learning and listen to what we're talking about. Um, for me, two or three times a week and for Tina, less. <laughs> so hopefully she'll get in the rhythm soon and we'll have Tina posting at least once or twice a week. So anyway, um, don't forget about slow crawl. And that free shipping still on through the end of the month, so you have a little bit of time left. Um, let's see, what else do we have going on? Oh, I don't know, just all kinds of stuff. There's just always, there's always things happening, right? Oh, I can hear, I've got, there's just birds. I've got lots of birds around here. Um, and I need to refill my hummingbird feeder because they've been coming up and checking it out pretty frequently. And I'm trying to, be really good and change my sugar water out every two or three days because you're supposed to be doing that so I'm trying to remember that it's just there's always something to do isn't there always something to do anyway uh, I'm going to go ahead we're gonna shift the perspective I'm gonna change that camera and put it down so that you can watch my hands and hopefully I do things correctly and if you are playing along and you want to um, do some tatting techniques today you are going to need um, a shuttle and some thread, and it's always good to have scissors and a crochet hook or a pick on hand. Uh, if you don't have those, a really sharp needle's okay too. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this. And there we have nice clouds. Nice clouds, pretty clouds. Okay, and we'll open up my cloth here that I like to use. There we go, all right. So, I'm gonna grab again my giant taxi shuttle. So here is our, our work from last time, right? Last time that I was tatting. So, let me get 
I'm actually going to get a second color out today. Um, let's get this. This is a super bright yellow. This one will be really easy to see. I just bought like a package of these um, cords so that I had some to play with. See, there's a nice bright yellow. Okay, so let's talk about some advanced tatting techniques. The first one that I want to talk about today is um, a lock join. So we learned how to do an up join and we discussed doing the down join last time. But this time uh, we want to make a lock join. So when you make a lock join, the key is, uh oh, I have to find my end. This could be, I wonder where the other end is. Ah, eh, we're just gonna ignore that. I'll just get this end out, it'll be good enough. Figure it out later. Um, when you make a lock join, what you're doing is you're actually making, um, you're making a stitch, but you aren't finishing the stitch. So you don't actually, um, flip the second half of your stitch and sometimes you want to do that because um, you are say making a chain so what have I got going oh I just about lost my there we go my yellow cord here um, so let's say let's say that uh, you want to make a chain and just ignore the fact that uh, I'm just holding my chains together here. This is not, this is not how you would be doing dish. <laughs> Should don't do what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, no, no, no. All right, so let's say uh, you wanna make a lock join and so I'm just gonna put one, there we go. Okay, now I can set my hand properly. There we go, so I'm just going to uh, you know, take my chain here and I'm just gonna put a few stitches in. So there's our few stitches, there's a few stitches. And maybe throw in a pico, a big pico. Well, it won't be that big because, you know, it's in cord. There. If that was a thread pico, that would be a very large pico, but it doesn't look that big on here. Uh, so let's say that uh, I'm making my chain here and um, I've come to a point where I want to um, join my chain and I don't want it to slip anymore. So when that happens, then you need to make a lock join. So let's pretend we've gone this way. So let's say we're going to join it to this pico here, right here, and we don't want it to slip or move. So pardon me while I dig for there it is, a crochet hook. And this is way too small for this cord. So this is not the crochet hook that I would use if I was actually tatting with this instead of it just being a demonstration. So let's say that we want to um, join these together. We're gonna join it here. And when we do this um, and we make a lock join, you start by, um, you know, making a regular up join, but instead of making the second half, so usually we would just go ahead and we would make the second half of that stitch. And if you make the second half of that stitch, I'm gonna show you and then pick it out. So I'm gonna make the second half. So if I make the second half of this stitch, this um, central cord will continue to slide and potentially this cord could slide out of place. So let's say that um, we wanna do a lock join instead. So tighten your chain all the way down and then make sure that your join is nice and tight and it's the way that you want your chain to look. And then instead of flipping your stitch, you're actually going to not flip your stitch. I know it feels so wrong, doesn't it? So wrong. But to make a lock join, this is what we're going to do. We have to do that, you know, front half flipped, the second half not flipped. And what this does is this allows us to lock this chain in place so that we can keep going and that chain will not move now. So that is the idea behind a lock join, whether you're using it um, with a chain or a ring. 
is that you are locking that join into place and it will not continue to move. So that's the first thing. And I made sure to do it in two colors so that you could really see that uh, here's that first half, that up join, and then there is the second half, which is not flipped to make a lock join. So I don't know, hold a little closer to the camera. There we go. So that's a lock join. Um, the next thing that we want to talk about is the shoelace trick. Um, the shoelace trick is really just if you're using two colors like we have here and you need to change the placement of the colors, um, all you do is um, you tie the first half of a square knot like you're tying your shoes. So you take your right thread over your left thread and um, and make a knot just like this. Oops, I flipped it. We don't want to do that. And that just reverses the direction of your work. So now we can take this color if we want to. Oh my, I've got to find the tail and get this taken care of. Hang on, let me just, I'm going to tie up my tail. So I have this big loop of thread and this is useful whether you have yarn and you are a knitter or a spinner or a crocheter or a weaver or a tatter. If you wrap the tail end of your yarn or your thread around your piece two or three times, put your tail through and then pull it tight, which I just failed to do, but I'm going to get it done. Slippery, slippery stuff here. There we go. That will keep your loops together and keep your tail from getting away. So there's a tiny little trick. Okay, so now we could use, um, we could use this yellow if we wanted and we could tat with this color and it would give us green stitches instead. So pretending that my hand is a shuttle and this is really the function of a shuttle is to hold your thread so that you aren't fighting it like I just had to, to get all of your thread through your loop. That's the function of a shuttle as well. So there we go. Do the shoelace trick and then we flip the position of our colors and now we can change our colors and or do something else with them. So there's our shoelace trick. Let's see, what else do I need to show you? Um, this would be a really good one now. Let me show you how to do a split ring because now we're set up for a split ring. So when you're doing a split ring, you want two different colors and you can just tie two colors together to practice this. Um, when I do it, when I start a split ring, a lot of times what I do is I um, start with my ring in the one color and I hide my tail um, inside my stitches and then I start, I just lay in my second color and leave my tail out and then I weave it in later. Um, anyway, so let's make a ring. Remember how to make a ring. I'm gonna make a ring. I'm gonna do a split ring. It's all kinds of fun, right? And what we're going to do to make a split ring is, um, and we're making a two color split ring because you can make one color split rings, but we're gonna make a two color split ring. So I'm just going to start my ring and do two, three, four, oops, three, four, there we go. I can, I can count, I swear. I watch enough Sesame Street, I should be able to. Okay, so now we've got our ring and we've got some stitches on it. So there's four stitches. And now let's say that we want to bring in this yellow and we want to make it half green and half yellow and split this ring. So now what we're going to do is we are going to do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna make the same motions for tatting, but instead of actually tatting the piece, which of course I've made kind of a mess of this. Let me just wind it up a bit again. There we go. Let 
so now we're gonna do uh, the stitches in reverse because you want them to match from side to side. So you do the back half first, so we're just gonna dangle. And again, this is the function of a shuttle, is to keep all of this thread uh, out of the way so that it's not in your hand. All right, so just tighten that down and there's the back half. And you don't want to flip it. That's the key to this when you're doing these uh, s these two color split rings is that you can't you don't want to flip this. Um, if you try to flip it, you'll just make a mess of everything. So you don't want to flip this. You just want to leave it unflipped. It's very counterintuitive. It feels weird when you're doing it, but that's the way it's got to be. Okay. So now I'm going to do under over back through my loop and again we do not want to flip this, so we're going to keep that tension really tight on our ring and just pull that down. And there is our first stitch. So now we're just going to keep doing that. Dangle that in front. Pull it tight. Clearly I can see I need to buy another Tatsy if I'm going to uh, keep demonstrating this. There we go. Let's see, over the top and then do, do, do. there's two. Let's make a third. Three. And then a fourth. Very awkward. Shuttles are totally, totally worth it, people. I'm just saying. All right. Okay, I'm really struggling. So I'm just going to make three in my second color. And now you can close your ring. So you can see that we have our two different colors here. And I can close my ring just like this. Mm -hmm. And bada bing, bada boom, we got a split ring. It's two different colors. So it wasn't that fun. So the key, again, when you're doing these uh, split rings is you start working with your um, outside color or your top color, however you want to think of it, your ring color. And then you work your non-ring color. And when you do your non-ring color, right, because this was our core thread, this green, you make sure that you start with the back half and then the front half back half, front half, back half, front half of that whole stitch. Or the second half and then the first half if that's how you prefer to think of it. And then you just lay your stitches in and you don't flip them. That's the key is that you don't flip them. And when you don't flip them then you get these lovely two color split rings. So let's see, we did a lock join, we did the shoelace trick, um, we talked about split rings. And then split rings are a good place to talk about mock picots. So mock picots um, are used at the end of a ring instead of using a pico. So if I had had picots along here, these these are the picots right here. This is a pico, and that's a pico that I joined to. Boy, we're making some weird little thing, aren't we? Anyway, if I had had picots along here and I suddenly needed a pico here, it's going to help me climb out to my next ring. So uh, mock picots are used a lot of times to, um, to climb out, to move on to another element. And um, you make a mock picot after you have closed your ring and you use both your threads uh, to make a lock stitch that's just a little bit shorter than all of the other picots that you've used because um, that, that mock picot will stretch over time. So. Let's see, I would be using this, and I would do this, and then let's say this was the length of our pico, and then remember we make the first half, and then we don't make the second half if we're making a lock stitch. So there we go. So that is a mock pico right there because you are using both of your colors or both of your threads coming off of your piece and you're making a lock stitch to make a mock pico. It's a fake pico so that when you are working you can climb out of a round um, up into the next round or move out of a motif into the next motif. 
All right, we've had all kinds of fun today. So there's the lock join here. So there's that first half in the first color, second half unflipped in the second color. And then we used our shoelace trick so that we could switch colors here. So we went from having yellow stitches to having green stitches. Uh, usually you wouldn't use it for this. You use this shoelace trick for other things. Usually um, this comes at at a join point or um, when you're using this for um, like at the end of a ring, you've closed your ring and you'll use the shoelace trick to flip your colors so that your primary color becomes your secondary color. Um, but anyway, we just did it like this so I could show you the shoelace trick real fast. And then this is our split ring here and then this is our mock pico which allows us to climb out and then make another split ring if we want it. So what do you think? Four new techniques for your tatters hand basket if you didn't have them already. And if you need more help, um, I can recommend the Advanced Fancy Pants uh, by Donna Edwards. And she has some really great photos and descriptions that can help you um, if you're having trouble or just need a little bit of, you know, assistance in remembering how to do some things. So there's a few more little tatting tips and tricks, and I can see that I definitely need to order myself another tat see if I'm going to be showing you how to work with this big cord. So that's on my list of things to order now. Let's see, let's flip this around. And uh, let me put this up and ooh, there, Kelly's really close. Okay. All right, so hopefully you learned a little bit of something in your tatting today. Um, remember, I will not be back on Monday because it is a holiday. Um, I am going to try to get your newsletter out today. Um, you can go check out Tina's tutorial on the Ben Gulbin shrug, which she put up on our Black Sheep Fiber Emporium YouTube channel. We do still have um, free shipping through the end of May. Let's see, slow yarn crawl started today. My goodness, there's just way too many things to tell you about. So many things to tell you about. Um, and the book that I was using was that um, Advanced Fancy Pants. So remember, you can uh, order that through Black Sheep Fiber Emporium. You just need to tell us uh, what it is that you want. And we do carry a lot of tatting tools at Black Sheep Fiber Emporium. Uh, we have shuttles, we have Pico gauges, we have Clooney looms, we have um, the tiny crochet hooks, and see I've got a little dab of tatting with beads in it on the end of my little tiny crochet hook. Uh, we carry thread, we carry Lizbeth as well as Perlovka, and um, we have a little dab of DMC and Floretta still. Um, we would really like to bring in the Olympus, so if you order enough stuff from us, then maybe we can get the Olympus in soon. That was on our goal goal list. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I'm looking at Charlie, he's sleeping on the deck beside me because he likes to be out here while I am teaching or talking, just talking right now. So anyway, I think I've covered all my bases. Um, Wednesday, I will try to get all of my stuff together. Um, I have a chiropractic appointment. So I will warn you that I might miss our Wednesday um, two o'clock appointment. I will, I will do everything in my power to make sure that I'm ready for it. Um, and try to be, try to be ready to go on Wednesday at two o'clock, my time central. Um, and we can talk about color work. Um, well, what was it? Stranded, twined, twisted, and, uh, see, and there's one more. There's four. There were four of them that were really interesting, but I'll do some research and I'll pull all my, um, yarn together and my needles and if you want to join in and join along then um excuse me i would just say go ahead and get either fingering or worsted sport whatever yarn you want just get some yarn get some practice yarn and needles that match so if you're using like a sport weight yarn you'll want a two or a three needle and if you're um, using a fingering weight maybe a one or a two and if you're using worsted weight then you know probably like a seven um ish so just get yarn and a needle that you are comfortable with and you'll need at least two colors so that we can practice and um, you can join in with me i'll probably be casting on 20 stitches and i will probably knit a row and purl a row 
um, before we get into the color work. So there's homework if you'd like to do it. It's really hard homework. Cast on 20 stitches, knit a row, purl a row. Oh, I don't know if I can handle that, right? So Wednesday, that's my goal, is we'll do some color work. Friday next week, I don't know. So I guess we're going to have to talk about it on Wednesday and set something up. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe we'll just see if Tina uh, would like to take next Friday. I'll talk to her and see if maybe she would like to take next Friday. Um, she usually does her talks at about 3 o'clock Pacific, which is, I think, 5. Yeah, that's 5 Central Time. Um, so maybe I'll challenge Tina to um, be in charge next Friday, and I will join you all on Wednesday. So I will see you next time. Don't forget to go to that Black Sheep Fiber Emporium. Help us stay in business. Um, free shipping, free shipping, and we're still doing 10% off a lot of things with that code Black Sheep Craft Time. And remember to um, tag your posts on social media so that we can check out that Black Sheep Craft Time. Because um, I like seeing your pictures. I do. I like seeing your pictures and I like seeing what you're working on. Stay safe. Um, you know, wear your mask when you go out if you can. And uh, don't go out if you don't have to, you know, that kind of thing. I know we all want to get back to business as usual. Oh, the hummingbirds came to visit. Wait, I'll see if I can turn it. I don't know. Can you catch him? See my little hummingbird? Oh, it's really hard to see. Yay, hummingbird. I really like, and I really like that feeder too because I can pop the whole top off and I can clean it really well. Um, anyway, I am going to go set my hummingbird friends up with some fresh syrup and, um, Put away all of my tatting things and do more work on this little yarn crawl and the black sheep website and try to get that newsletter out to everybody this afternoon so i will see you next time stay safe stay crafty and um wednesday my goal is to be back wednesday uh, about two o'clock my time with the color work stuff if i can't do it i will put a post up on facebook so that you know um, but i'm gonna make every effort to be here see you then